Shall I give my introduction? Oh, no. No, no, not now. Inform. Mika, admit the students. Can you hear me, Mika? You there? Freeze. Unmute, unmute. We are good to go. Let's but start. I can't I I can't see students. Hi Anurag. Hello Mok. Hi Raja. Hi Atul. Good evening, Suresh. Megamam Atul seems to be a bit sleepy. How are you? Guys, please turn on your camera. Hello, Sushan. Good evening, everyone. How are you all? So please turn on your cameras. Oh, that's great. So meanwhile, Mega Mom is interacting with you all. I would like to tell you about the setting. So you all will be on mute in today's demo, but in upcoming classes, you will be free to interact with your mentor by unmuting yourself. Okay, so this setting is meant just for demos class. So today, whatsoever you have to say to us, you have to ask from us, you have to just type it in the chat box and we'll be going to answer your each and every query. All right. So type it in the chat box from which school okay, and city you all are joining us. Quickly type it in the chat box from which school and city you all are joining us. Okay, Anurag is joining. Saint Michael School, Durgapur. Good to know that. Moksha is joining us from Durgapur Small School, Gurukram. What about others? Uh, no, the notebook is not required as of now. What about others? We all are waiting for you. So as uh, kids, as you know that we don't allow students to sit with cameras off in our classes. So please turn on your cameras because we want to see your lovely faces. It should be mutual interaction, right? We, we don't want to interact with black screens with names only. Okay, so Moksha is having a camera problem. Okay, we can understand. And what about Raja and Shashank? So, hope the kids are joining with their names only. These are kids' names, Raja and Shashank. Okay, so I would like to tell you about the flow of the session. So, as I already mentioned, whosoever has joined late would want to inform you again that you all will be on mute-in session. But in upcoming classes, you'll be able to interact with, interact with your mentor freely by unmuting yourself. Okay. So now Megama will be going to uh, inform you about few links, which she'll be going to paste it in the chat box. Then I'll be going to make you meet with your mentor because she's already here with us. And then I'll be going to show you a short informative PPT wherein you'll get to know about your course in detail. Then I'll be going to give you a dashboard tour where you'll get to know that how you can have access of your material. All right. Hope I'm clear to everybody. Show me thumbs up on the screen if I'm clear. Oh, good. So Megama, I think we can move ahead with the chat links. Sure, ma'am. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yeah, you are audible. It's a bit low. Can you be a bit loud?
Okay, kids. As you can see, there are some chat links which has been pasted in the chat box. So first link is all about syllabus link. So if you know more about your syllabus, just click on this particular link and just get to know more about your syllabus. Payment can be clicking on this particular link. So if you're not enrolling for this particular batch, just click on this link, make payment, and enroll for this batch quickly. Okay. In case you want to share a feedback, just click on this particular link, get a feedback form and sh and you can feedback us. For more batch details, just click on this particular link and you have to just know this batch details. In case of further questions, email us at support at the rate of success.com or drop us a WhatsApp on these two particular numbers. So these are some chat links which I'm already discussed with you all. If I'm clear to everyone, just show me a thumbs up like this. Hope everybody is clear with the chat links. So these are the few links which will be helpful for you all. So as you can see, the feedback link is there, batch detail link is there, payment link is there, syllabus link is there. So these are the four relevant links. So we're in. Uh, okay, Athul, you want me to repeat again for you? All right, I'll do that. So first link is of syllabus link. You can avail your syllabus by clicking on this particular link. So in case you want to know more about this batch, you can click on this all batch detail link. Okay. So in case you have not enrolled for this batch yet, you can just click on this payment link and you can enroll for the batch and we'll see you in the classes. In case you want to give us any of the feedback, you can just fill up this form and we'll get your feedback related to the classes. Okay. So in case you have any further query, you can just email us at support at the rate You can WhatsApp us, or WhatsApp us on these two particular numbers. Okay. Hope I'm clear to you Atul now. Great. So let me make you introduce with your mentor. She is a wonderful mentor. Her name is Miss Ratnika. She is already here with us. She is into teaching professions since so long and she loves to teach kids like you. So I hope you will be going to meet her and you are super excited for the same. So all over to you, Ratnika, ma'am. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Ratnika. I'll be your English mentor. And I am in the teaching profession for past more than uh, 10 years. Right. So for teaching is my passion. I feel that it's the most rewarding profession, so to speak. And and I find it more satisfactory when, you know, my, when, when uh, I teach my students and they give, you know, uh, and I see them learn and grow. Okay, so uh, so my class will be very interacting. I want my class to be very interactive, wherein uh, there is there'll be it'll, it'll be comprise blend of both discussion and you know a lecture also because I have to clarify certain doubts. I have to uh, you know explain the concepts to you. So let's you know enjoy and have fun in our class and let's make it more interactive and focus more on clarifying our doubts. Moreover, apart from learning concepts, let's focus on building and enhancing our vocabulary also because that is the integral part of learning. All uh, you know, skills for integral skills of uh, uh, English, isn't it? So, can you tell me what are the four key skills of learning English? What are the four language skills that you must know, or we practice while learning English? Can anyone you just type it out in the chat box? What are this? So, when we learn English or language, we are focus, primary focus. There are four key skills that you must know or we learn while studying English. Anyone? First one is? How do you have to type it in the chat box? Yes. Your mentor is waiting for your answer, kids. All right, I tell you. First is, first is uh, yes, reading. Absolutely. Reading, writing. Absolutely. Reading, writing and Listening. listening and last one is can we do without it can we learn anything if we if that last skill is missing that is speaking isn't it so l s w r so the, the short acronym for listening speaking writing and uh, reading is l s w r so when we're learning english we focus on these four key skills all right so let's make this uh, you know session or these classes fruitful for us for all of us, I'll also teach you and I'll learn from you as well. So let's, you know, make this sharing and, you know, um, and learning uh, 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 more, more fun and entertaining for both of us. Okay, so let's have our uh, classes more interactive and animated and focus on learning and building our language skills. All right. Looking forward to um, starting my session very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ritika, ma'am. So, kids, I hope you're super excited because I can see your classes are going to be fun-filled. 
the learning manner, right? So let me share my screen quickly and I will not take much time because I want that you should enjoy your mentor class along with the learning perspective. Oh. Hope my screen is visible to everybody. Thanks. Just a moment and we are good. So I welcome everyone at the platform of Olympiad Success. So as you know, Olympiad Success is India's largest profession platform which offer a program, school plus program includes subjects, mathematics, English, science, logical reasoning, communication, spoken and written, Vedic maths and coding. We do offer different one on one preparation classes for different boards for different grades. So we do have international mathematics preparation Olympiad classes also. So you can meet our rank holders on the screen. They are kids like you only. So your picture can also come on the screen. What? So what do you have to do for the same? You have to just spare two hours every day extra from your regular studies. As you know, Olympiad examinations are a little tougher than the regular examinations. So prepare well and score well. So what are you going to get in these classes? So in live classes, you there'll be around 20 students delivered to a Zoom platform by a seasoned tutor. So session will be three days per week. Days will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And timing will be 8 p.m. till 9.15 p.m. with five minutes of break. The session includes mix of theory, practice question, doubt session. So, so you'll be going to get to know that how you can have access of your material on the dashboard. Soon I'm going to give you a tour for the same. So these all are the relevant links. No need to worry. Links have been pasted in the chat box and will again pasted in the chat box. The fees for this course is 11,151 rupees. It will be 50 session course. Payment can be made by clicking on this particular link. So what all you need for these regular classes? Just a laptop or desktop with good internet connection, a good camera for better picture clarity that you can see whatsoever your mentor is writing on the whiteboard and good headphones for better audio clarity that you should not miss any of the Conception clarity, which your mentor will be going to do it in the sessions. So our regular classes will be going to start from coming Friday, that is 19th of July. So hope I'm clear with this 50 to everyone. So let me share my screen with you all once again, wherein I'm going to take you through our dashboard now. Hope my screen is visible to everybody once again. So students, what you have to do, you have to just enter this URL, olympiadsuccess.com and you will get this page on your screen wherein you have to just enter your correct user details. So after logging in, you will get your personal details on your screen. So you have to check your profile in case you find any error. You can... Correct it over here only. You can click on update button for the updation. So over here, you have to click on live classes wherein you can have access of your material. So select your subject and topic and you are good to go. So you can see there is schedule, holiday calendar, reading material and question papers for your practice. So everything is proper systematic for you. So schedule will give you a reference wherein you'll get to know that in which session you're going to cover with specific topics. So each and every topic is bifurcated in proper different sessions. So you can see after completion of each and every chapter topic, there'll be a test discussion for you all. That in case you have any doubts, you can clear from your mentor. So last, there are super classes also, right? So these are the more practice sessions in detail. So holiday calendar for your reference that you can plan your days accordingly. Okay. So here is this reading material. So each and every PDF is downloadable. For that, what you have to do, you have to just click it here on the top and you can download the PDF, right? So this is the reading material. That is the question paper. So question paper is for your practice. I recommend you to just download the paper, take out the printout, solve it, and then check your answer keys later on once you have done your paper. So here are the answer keys. will give you clarity that which question you have done correct and which question you have done wrong that you can practice again. Okay. So for more practice, you can also check, click on this worksheet button and you can get more worksheet, uh, practice worksheets. So select your subject. And you can see your practice worksheets over here. Click on take exam. 
read your instructions carefully, click on start worksheet and you're good to go. You can see there are so many questions. So once you are done with your question one, read the question properly and check your answers. And you can see the questions are designed according to the Lumped examination. So I would like to read one question for you. Change the active voice into the passive voice. Please come soon. Soon you should come. Come soon, please. You are requested to come soon. You are requested to please come soon. So I would like to know the answer of this question. Hurry up, type it in the chat box. So the option is A, B, C, D. Quickly, I'm waiting for your answers in the chat box. Oh, so the Kushkar is saying B, and I want you to send answer directly to me, not to everyone. All right, so as Kushkar has said B, so let's go ahead with the B and let's see what happens. So the moving ahead on next, uh, so you have to click on next button. So change the active voice into passive voice. Let me sleep here. Please here, let me sleep. I may be allowed to sleep here. Kindly let me sleep here. I will be allowed to sleep here. So what is the correct answer? Again, everyone, no. You have to send answer directly to me. So the option A, B, C, D. Oh, so you are saying C. Let's go ahead with the C, okay? So in this way, kids, you have to just do all your questions. And once you are done all the questions, students, so you have to submit your worksheet. Okay, so for that, you have to click on finish button. But before that, I want to show you one more thing. So in case, let's say in question 12, you, when you are on question 12, you have doubt in this question and you want to review this question again before submitting your worksheet. For that, what you can do, you can click this question, select and mark for review. Okay. So the moment you're going to finish your worksheet, it will not allow you to finish. In the time, you will not review the 12th question. Okay. So now I have reviewed and I'm good to go. And yes, so you can see that icon has come in green and you can screen and you can submit your worksheet. So now you can check your performance also that how you have attempted your worksheet. So you, you can check your scores also. So select your subject over here. And you can click on view. We have attempted this active and passive voice. So we have attempted two, three questions and all three are gone. Okay. So this shows that whenever you're attempting your worksheet, you have to be in a very concentrative manner because these worksheets are on the Olympiad examination level, right? So these are very tricky and little bit difficult from your regular studies. So you have to be appropriate while studying, okay? So don't need to worry, our mentors are here for you and they'll be going to guide you a very better way, okay? So I hope I'm clear to everybody with the dashboard tour and the post details. Show me a thumbs up on the screen if you're clear with the details. Oh, good. So I think we are good to go for the demo. Before that, just drop it in the chat box, inform me that what are the class days and timings. I want to see whether you were attentive while PPT or not. So what are your class days and timings? Atul, not all. What is your doubt, Atul? Please drop it in the chat box. If anybody is having any doubt, please drop it in the chat box. We'll be going to answer your queries. <clears throat> yeah, correct. Days are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Timing will be 8 p.m. till 19 p.m. Absolutely correct. And regular classes are going to start from 19th of July. Absolutely correct. Except from Atul, anybody else is having any doubt? So please type it in the chat box. Atul, I'm waiting for your question. The user ID will be given after payment. Yes, yes it will not be given. You will going to get it auto-generated, right? So the moment you will be going to register yourself through website, so you'll get it from there only. Okay, so because you have to register via giving your email ID. So that email ID, you'll be going to use it. Clear? Any other doubt? Anybody else is having any doubt? Please turn on your cameras. Shashank, Alina, Vishnu. Shashank, turn on your camera. Vishnu, Alina, turn on your camera. I think we are good to go for the demo. So all over to you, Ritika, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, let me share my screen.
All right, children. So before I begin my topic or the concept, I want you to find out and come to the conclusion that what exactly are we going to study today? All right. I think most of you have all, must have already guessed it, but I want you to just brainstorm a little bit more and let's go uh, and let's find out that what are we going to discuss today? Okay. So can you read these first two sentences? Yes. Uh, Pooja, ma'am, are they going to, uh, uh, will they be on mute or they can participate and discuss and talk? Yes, ma'am, they'll be on mute. But in case you want them to unmute, you can unmute themselves. Okay. 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 So there are two, as you can see, there are two sentences on the screen, right? The first one, the children bought several beautiful purple flowers for their grandmother. And second one, she wore an elegant, long, vintage blue silk evening gown. Isn't it? So now I want you to tell me the parts of speech. Are you all familiar with the parts of speech? Just raise your hand. How many of you are familiar with the parts of speech? How many of you are familiar with parts of speech? Just raise your hand. All right. So Vishnu, let me unmute you first. Uh, unmute yourself. How to unmute them up? Okay, yes, yes Dhanush can speak now. Okay, Dhanush, I can see you now. Dhanush, as you can see the first screen, can you see my screen? Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, it was visible. It was visible. Okay, Dhanush. Now tell me, when you read the first sentence, can you point out all parts of speech? What all parts of speech can you observe in the first sentence? Quickly. Parts of speech. Are you familiar with the parts of speech? All right. Uh, are you familiar with, uh, do you know the sentence structure? Okay. Do you know the subject verb agreement? Subject, verb and predicate. Can you identify subject verb uh, predicate? I can't hear you, Danush. Moksh. Moksh, you can speak now. Yes, Moksh. Moksh. Moksh, can you tell me what is the subject in the sentence? Are you able to hear them, uh, Pooja ma'am? Because I can't. <laughs> Moksh, you're not audible to me. Anyone else? Vishnu? Kushakra? Alina? Can you tell me what is the subject in the first sentence? Or you can type it in the chat box. What is the subject? Yes, the children. Who is AS? AS is Alina. Yes, A, uh, Alina. The subject is the children. <coughs> then what is the verb in the subject? What is the verb in the subject? Uh, in the sentence. What is the verb? The subject is... I can't hear anyone. Yes, the, subject, uh, the verb is bought. Now, what is the object over here? The subject is the children. Verb is bought. And then, what are they expected to bought? Flowers for their grandmother, isn't it? So the object is flowers for the grandmother. So we know in the first sentence that the children is subject, bought is a verb, and flowers for their grandmother is a is a is an object, right? So what are these extra additional words that have been mentioned over here? What are these? Several beautiful purple. What is the purpose of these words over here? Anyone? What is the purpose of these words? Somebody has written these are adjective. So why have we used these words? Can anyone say? Uh, tell? Why have we used these words? Three, three words, three adjectives to describe flower. Absolutely correct. So we have used three adjectives to describe the, the beauty of flower, isn't it? That, the, the, that provides a description of the flower. 
all right so when we say several beautiful purple flower that gives us a complete picture of the flower isn't it so why do we use adjective we use adjective to describe something extensively isn't it so that we can visualize the picture in our mind okay now coming to the second sentence she wore an elegant long vintage blue silk evening gown now tell me what is the subject over here what is the subject over here subject verb and predicate uh, subject verb and object quickly tell me predicate consists of verb and object isn't it so um, that is why i'm just uh, you know i have bifurcated predicate also i'm just uh, uh, taking the names uh, talking about the parts of sentence separately subject verb and object now quickly tell me she is the subject you have to mention she dash hyphen subject what is the verb over here Wor is the verb absolutely, and what is an object here? What's an object? Grown, yes, and uh, no gown. It's gown, not grown. It's gown. Gown. You know what is gown? Okay, evening gown. Again, evening gown is again an adjective. Evening, right? So how many adjectives have we used here to describe a gown? We have used one, two, three, four, five, six. six adjective to describe the gown isn't it so she wore an elegant long vintage means what is the meaning of vintage quickly tell me what is the meaning of vintage vintage yes we have used six adjectives vintage mean old very good who is mj moksh jain very good moksh vintage is old so you know when you talk about when you describe a gown which was worn in the evening the first thing i mean how have you described it you have used all the adjective you have described it so beautifully that you know that you can easily you know visualize it in your mind and you know think picture it in your mind that okay how that gown would have looked isn't it an elegant long vintage blue in color the texture is silk and it is worn in the evening isn't it it's kind of a evening gown what type of gown is it is it uh, usually worn in the evening isn't it so that was an evening gown so when we use this adjective we put them in order also so this is what we are going to learn in today's session that how we can you know describe something using lots of adjective and what uh, you know the role adjective important role adjective plays in our writing skills in our speaking also in our reading writing everything you know it is it's an integral part of language and one of the parts of speech as well isn't it important parts of speech because uh you will use adjective in your writing if you have to write a descriptive essay isn't it so you are supposed to use lots of adjective to you know evoke the imagery uh in the in, in your write up right to bring it into uh, to make it alive how you can make it alive by you know portraying the exact picture of the you know, could be a scenery or a person or an event or a celebration anything isn't it so that is why adjective plays an integral role in english language so it's very important to learn them properly and how to use them how to write them if you come if you have you know a lot of ideas and you want to use so many adjective for a particular for a particular topic or an object or a person so you should know how you are supposed to place them in order in what order or properly like so that you know it is a, it will make a meaningful sentence right to make a meaningful sentence all right now coming to so yes uh, through these two examples we learned that today we are going to learn about adjectives adjectives so what are adjectives adjectives are words that describe nouns or pronoun so nouns and pronouns are also parts of speech so while we are learning the concepts i'll be giving you additional information about everything isn't it it's not only like since i will focus only on one thing but simultaneously i'll keep on giving you additional information about the concepts too all right other concepts so adjectives are words that are describe that describe noun pronoun we just saw that it describe the noun so what is a noun over here in these two sentences what is a noun which noun has these uh, adjectives described in the first sentence in the first sentence these three adjectives described which noun tell me in the chat box in the first sentence yes absolutely vishnu order of adjectives absolutely So in the first sentence, no, children is a noun though, but these adjectives are describing which noun? In the first sentence, several beautiful purple. These adjectives are describing which noun? So children is also a noun. 
grandmother is also a noun flower is also a noun so there are three nouns so which noun is exactly th these adjectives are describing tell me quickly tell me in the chat box very good flowers absolutely flowers okay so now you can easily find out you must have assessed that um, these adjectives are used before a noun or pronoun understood these adjectives are used to describe noun so through these adjectives we describe describe the noun flower okay so flowers are being described to these adjective and flower over here is a noun and these are all adjective describing the noun flowers okay now in the second one she wore an elegant long vintage blue silk evening gown so what is a noun over here there is only one noun which is gown okay so gown has been described by these adjectives again and these adjectives are placed before the noun isn't it as you can see in the sentence these have been placed before a noun all right now so now i assume that you have understood the concept that how we use adjective and where do we place them in a sentence we place them before a noun to describe the noun extensively emphatically so you know what in the emphatic writing also emphatic means wherein you use um, you know a lot of words like you being verbose right and you know describing something using adjective all right so when we writing the emphatic now, uh, writing also in that also we use lots of adjectives all right now adjectives are words that describe noun old green cheerful are examples of adjective something when you give more description for example you have gone to some you know birthday celebration and when you come back after attending the birthday celebration your mother asks you how was the party then how do you describe it how do you describe it give me example how would you describe it you will say yes i went to the birthday party yeah birthday party so how would you describe it you will use certain words to describe you know how did you feel isn't it you express your emotion over you will discuss overall uh, you know experience of the birthday party isn't it so what word would you use to describe it for example give me words quickly how was the birthday party for example you went to your friend's birthday party and you have to describe it because you have to describe your overall experience so how will you explain uh, describe it was exhilarating yes exhilarating so when you we use the word exhilarating um little bit difficult words that means that is an um vishnu i can't hear you let me unmute you vishnu i think you are you want to say something you can unmute yourself no ma'am i didn't want to say anything i accidentally clicked it okay okay no problem okay so when you have to describe the birthday party you can't you, you need some words to describe it as in it you need some words to express your feelings and you can you know um express it to your mom that how did you feel exactly did you feel sad excited exhilarating ecstatic happy over the moon isn't it so you need words so these words which describe your feelings your mood um your emotions that those those words are called adjectives okay amazing it was an amazing birthday party excellent uh, pompous lavish isn't it to describe that what kind of birthday party was it okay have you understood now it might be useful to think adjectives are describing words of course you are describing noun right so words like small blue so small what does it describe about a noun it talks about that how big was it size and blue is the color sharp is what kind of was it was it a sharp or you know what kind of a you know uh, object was it texture isn't it uh, if you say it was smooth smooth is the texture silky is the texture isn't it so you know um, so when you are talking about the adjective so you talk about the quality you express your opinion whether it was beautiful elegant adorable then you talk about the size big small massive giant then you talk about the age was it old was it uh, young or latest okay or um, or maybe ancient isn't it then you talk about shape was it big small um, medium kind of thing isn't it or round or rectangular square and then color blue as given the example then origin was it um, your ancient or medieval or chinese or italian marble isn't it then you talk about the material okay so all these things you will uh, you know uh, you can you know uh, uh, used to describe a noun so that is why these are also called describing words all right now next is let when we talk about adjectives so adjectives are further bifurcated into different kinds isn't it so what is the first kind of adjective 
is the quality. So when you have to describe the quality of certain object, then you use this kind of objective. Okay, for example, you have to describe the quality of a. Then you say of what kind. If I ask you, um, Tokyo is a large city. Here, the adjective large shows a certain quality associated with the city Tokyo, isn't it? What kind of city was it? It was a large city. Okay, what kind? Quality means what kind? Alice is a brilliant student. So, what kind of student was Al was Alice? Alice is a brilliant student. Okay, so first kind of adjective is quality. So, kinds of adjectives are further divided. Uh, you know, bifurcating into quality, opinion, size, determiners, and so on and so forth. All right. So now I want you, before we move further with the kinds of adjective, I want you to describe this picture. Use lots of adjectives. So let's first take the water. Okay. The first thing that we, I, for, for example, I ask you to describe the picture or write a descriptive paragraph based on this picture. Okay. You have to describe the beauty of this, you know, picture. Um, in writing, show, show, not tell. I mean, you're not supposed to tell anything. You have to show it through your words. And how will you show it through your words? By using different adjectives to describe different things that are present or depicted in the photograph. As you can see, there is a water, there's a greenery over here, the meadows, isn't the colorful flowers and the mountains, trees and the flora, fauna, everything. Okay, so let's start with water. Okay, how would you define water then? Right, and give an adjective for water quickly. Okay, so it's a bright blue, lovely, fresh. What is that? Describe transparent water. Okay, you can mention the color also. You can mention the color also. Clear. Okay, fresh, blue, clear. Okay. Can you give me synonym for fresh? Can you give me synonym for fresh? The word fresh, very reflective. Okay. Anyone think? Can we say pristine? Pristine, fresh. Yes. So while we are discussing uh, the words, the adjectives, I'll be giving you syn synonyms of those words also. Okay. We can say it's synonym, synonym, both are correct. Pristine. Clean, pristine, okay. All right, that's it. How else you can describe water? Fresh, blue, pristine, clear water, okay. Transparent, any natural, okay. <laughs> we avoid using natural. Can you say salty also? You can talk about the taste translucent. All right. So next images. Next is now you have to describe the uh, the you, you, let's say uh, flowers. How will you describe flowers? Describe flowers quickly. So whatever words I'm giving you, I'm throwing at you or I'm mentioning in the class. Those are all nouns. So you have to describe those nouns using adjectives. Okay. Yeah. Tell me. Describe flowers. Don't give me only colorful. Give, provide me with, you know, better vocabulary. Describe flowers. Colorful. What is the synonym for colorful? Rainbow, lively, vibrant. Yes, vibrant is a beautiful word. Intimidating. Oh my God, who is this? A, A, Atul. Why do you find flowers intimidating? Rainbow, lively, okay, colorful, hue. Then, don't they look cheerful, lively, animated, as if dancing? Hmm? In the glory of nature, isn't it? Attractive, absolutely. 
very good pleasant there are all over the places <laughs> okay there are all over the place so adjective means one word okay adjective means one word all right now next is i want you to describe the entire mountains okay let's describe the mountains now how can we forget mountains describe mountains quickly mountains no not far i don't want you to write phrases i want you to write a word an adjective enormous snow capped isn't it we can write snow capped gigantic isn't it enormous enormous spelling of enormous please check spelling of enormous Gigantic Kurgil War. I know it reminds you of Kurgil War, but uh, that's not how you're going to describe it right now. And if you you are mentioning the word Kurgil War, you have Kurgil War. You have to give a context, isn't it? You need to give a okay. Snow capped, massive rock. Hmm. Enormous, 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 gigantic, gargantuan, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, snow-capped mountains. And if you have to talk about the texture of the mountains, how will you do that? Texture of the mountains. How will you describe the texture? Moksh, are you writing? Moksh, are you there? You can also say an icy blue. What else? mystical mountains spectacular mountains if you have to describe the beauty of the mountains and how would you say it was a spectacular massive mesmerizing mountains picturesque mountains isn't it hmm panoramic mountains mighty isn't it can we use that yes heavenly heavenly not heaven heavenly you can say yes uh, moksh are you listening moksh Okay, I want you to participate also at the same time. Rough mountains, absolutely. You can talk about the rough, the texture. Yes, rough could be treacherous mountains. Uh, treacherous as in, I mean, it's very difficult to climb them, very challenging. Treacherous could be very challenging, isn't it? It's not easy to climb a mountain. Glistening white snow field mountains like that, vibrant. Okay, yes. Now, now let's talk about the meadows. Meadows, what do you mean by meadows, anyone? Meadows, what do you mean by meadows? Steep mountains, absolutely, Danush. What do you mean by meadows? Meadows are the... Meadows are the... What do you mean by meadows, anyone? Large grasslands, absolutely correct, Vishnu. Very good. Yes, grasslands are open, you know, big grass... Clad land, isn't it? Meadows. So, how will you describe the meadows given in the picture? Describe the meadows. How do, how, how do these meadows look? How does the meadow look like? When you look in the, you know, the entire picture, how do you perceive the meadows, green meadows? So, when we say green meadows, so green is again an adjective which depicts the color of a meadow, right? Describing the color of the meadows. But you can, you know, give a shape, texture, okay? And you express your opinion, okay? And uh, and whatnot. I mean, just, you know, write it. But you can talk about the purpose, origin, shape, age, everything. How would you describe the meadow? Let me see. How are you describing it? Perfectly trimmed, very good. Lush green, oh, lovely. Lush green. It's green all over. I know it's green all over, but you have to write. Lush green 
mesmerizing lush you can add mesmerizing mesmerizing talks about your opinion right mesmerizing lush green snow clad can we say snow clad meadows huh because as if snows are when we say lush green but we can't use snow isn't it because then if if the meadows are covered with snow then it won't be lush green isn't it so it won't be logical at all peaceful yes yes you can write peaceful absolutely you can also talk about how fresh the grass is looking isn't it delightful cheerful very good very good endless vast you can say sprawled sprawling soft grass yes you can say that yeah now next is this picture all right so do you all enjoy swimming give me thumbs up do you all like swimming i mean especially in this weather isn't it all right so now i want you to describe yes atul said yes so now i want you to describe the scenery the entire picture what do you see how would you describe the mood in the picture and also uh, what do you see everything the colors and the mood the sky everything describe it quickly each one of you at least give me five five words and nouns or adjective describing some noun in the picture as you can see the picture there are so many nouns in the picture okay so i want you to describe those nouns using good adjectives quickly and i want to see your vocabulary if your vocabulary is strong you can definitely come up with a brilliant uh, compelling adjective okay let me see uh enjoyable what is happiness happiness what you have to write the noun also what are you describing with the word happiness which noun are you describing amusement park slides swimming i i didn't ask you to give me nouns i asked you to give me adjective along with nouns describing nouns as bright as button which button bright sunny day very good bright and sunny day very absolutely and you can say sun kissed day sun kissed sky isn't it sun dappled water dappled what do you mean by dappled dappled means spots of lights and shade that is dappled d a p p l e d dappled speed sliding speed sliding is it steep you can say steep slides or you can say um adventurous water slides isn't it exciting vibrant colors of the slide vibrant slides we can you know describe the slides the color of the slides isn't it yes what else dawn fun curved clear sky yes clear sky you can say blue blue sky clear sky cloudy sky sky cold water pristine cold water scorching heat yes intimidating slides yes intimidating slides absolutely swimming in nice water absolutely okay yes so that's how so now moving forward now you've understood that why do we use adjective we use adjective to describe noun and to describe any picture okay we have if we have to write uh, if ma'am ask you to okay describe the picture write a paragraph on your visit to the water slide or visit to the mountain or the trip definitely how will you write it using adjectives okay so let's move further and dis uh, discuss the kinds of adjectives the first kind of adjective is the quality quality gives the answer that of what kind when you say the quality that what kind of thing is that a person or a object is then we use the adjective of quality for example tokyo is a large city alice is a brilliant student okay 
children are really attentive in the class. How are they? They are really attentive in the class. They are brilliant. Now, second type of adjective is adjectives of quantity that talks about the quantity of something. So you must have uh, learned um, in previous classes while studying the nouns that there are two kinds of nouns: countable nouns and uncountable nouns, isn't it? So when we talk about count, the quantity, adjective or quantity, that tells us about it how much. Is it several, some, much, many, little? So these are all are these all are the signify the quantity. Okay, so we use them with countable or uncountable noun. Okay. We need some rice. You have little patience. Again, patience is a noun. Uh, which which noun is it? Patience is what? What kind of noun? Quickly tell me. What kind of noun is patience? Let me test your knowledge. What kind of noun is patience? Yes, Atul. Yes. Uh, no noun. I said noun. What kind of noun is patience? It's an abstract noun. You can't touch it. You'll only feel it, isn't it? Right? So, little patience, all his wealth, any rice, right? So, describe when we have to describe the quantity of something of the noun, then we use these adjectives. Now, the third kind of adjective is adjectives of number. Adjectives of number. For example, if I ask you how many fingers in your hand, you will say there are five fingers. Okay, if you say only fingers, fingers would be the noun. If I ask you how many fingers, you said one, five fingers and one hand, isn't it? So five again and one again is a, five would be the adjective for fingers. Okay, and how, how is the, you know, are your, are your fingers long or thin or broad or thick? Then when you talk about the size and the quality of the, the this thing, then it is the, the that will be an adjective, isn't it? Of the quality of what kind of fingers do you, do you have in your finger, uh, in your hand? These are like thin finger, uh, thick finger, or broad fingers like that. Okay? So that would be the quality. But here I'm asking about the number. Okay? Many, one, two, first, tenth, all. These are all examples of numbers, adjective of numbers. So whenever you see that a number is appearing before the noun, then that is a, that would be an adjective of number. Okay, so usually in the exams or in the school exams also, they ask you, okay, fine, underline the adjective of number. A sentence will be given to you and the teacher would ask you, okay, fine, identify adjective of number, adjective of quality, adjective of quantity. Okay, then you have to, you know, if the concept is clear, you can easily mark it and, you know, uh, write it down in your notebook, isn't it? In your exam, give a correct answer to that question. So number means fifth, first, tenth, many. Okay, so these are all adjective of number that tells you the number now next one is demonstrative what do you mean by demonstrative when you demonstrate something when you show your friend something you use the word this that these those okay but these are also followed by a noun okay so these are also called adjectives which are also followed by a noun over here as you can see in the example that boy that bag those mangoes these are my books. So, so all these adjectives, demonstrative adjectives, are describing the noun, boy, bag, mangoes, and books. Understood? So these are called demonstrative adjectives. So from the very word, you can you know keep that in mind. It should be etched on, etched on your mind that you know, what kind of adjective is that. Now interrogative. You all know the meaning of interrogative, isn't it? Interrogative means when you ask questions, okay? So when you ask questions, you use these words, who's, which, where, right? So these are also followed by the word, the noun, isn't it? Which bag, which tree, where are you going tomorrow, right? So these are all, uh, are these, these are interrogative adjectives. So interrogative adjectives are often used along with nouns to ask questions such as what, which, when, where, whom, who, whom, whose, okay? And these are followed by nouns. Next, possessive. Possessive, you know what is the meaning of possessive? Something that you own, isn't it? That is yours, right? So you say it's my bag, my home, our, our family, your, your friend, his brother, their grandmother, isn't it? Her books, isn't it? It's mine. It's, it's, uh, um, uh, it's favorite, uh, it's favorite movie, isn't it? We talk about that, isn't it? So when we say, when we use these possessive, adjectives before the noun so these are called possessive adjectives okay so that means these possessive adjectives describe the noun 
all right are sure to possess or ownership so these possess so these adjectives depict the ownership of something that means you possess something you have it now examples of possessive adjectives are my computer our father your cycle your uh, child is not doing well in the school so you know as you can see again these possessive adjectives are followed by noun in all these sentences now another type of so uh, now these are the types right so how many types did we discuss we discussed possessive one then interrogative two demonstrative three number four five and six so how many kinds of adjectives did we, did we just discuss we discussed six types of adjectives we discussed six types of adjectives can you quickly list down six types of adjectives that we just discussed in the uh, class quickly quickly first one first one was tell me the first one the quality that answers the question of what kind isn't it that answers the question of what kind okay then second this is something else these are copy pasted from the internet so the ones that we discussed in the class i want you to list down those first one is quant quality then quantity then quality quantity then numbers then possessive check your spelling of uh, moksh possessive abstract we have not discussed yet possessive demonstrative interrogative isn't it okay so these adjectives now coming to another kind of adjective so when we talk about adjective initially when we start learning adjective we start with simple positive adjective then comparative and superlative if you remember isn't it we learn about types of adjective when we are in grade 6 5 or 6 but before that we start learning about adjective the first thing we learn about adjective is three forms of comparison we use adjective to compare positive comparative and superlative do you remember this a uh, clean cleaner cleanest new new and newest cheap cheaper cheapest right dirty dirtier dirtiest do you remember these comparative adjectives right so why do we use these comparative adjectives to compare something right to tell uh, you know we use them that which one is better right and also talk about which one is the best is it that's when we use uh, superlative so these are the three forms of adjective to compare things right clever cleverer cleverest simple simpler simplest all right so for example you have to compare uh, the two friends okay for example the two friends are very intelligent so you have to talk about uh, they are very clever they are very smart in studies so you how will you compare how will you tell that aditya is cleverer than mary isn't it but let's say isn't it aditya is cleverer than akash okay and akash is um, is um uh, you can say um use any example is cuter than or is um healthier than or taller than uh, aditya isn't it like that so when you are when you are comparing two people then you use comparative but when you have to show who is the best okay and you know the the who stands out right who is the odd one out then you use superlative okay now irregular adjective good better best so these also you know compare and contrast uh, you know people or objects but but their forms are different when we talk about comparative and superlative okay so there are exceptions okay so in the first example we discuss clean clear cleanest cheap cheaper cheapest when we say that wooden wooden toys are cheaper than the uh, metal toys right so we are comparing two kinds of object isn't it cheaper than so the when we say that okay plastic toys are the cheapest isn't it these are the cheapest toys or cheapest products you will ever find okay so cheapest means something that you have to talk about these are one of its kind isn't it then we use a superlative degree for example you have to describe kashmir how would you describe kashmir then in terms of uh, beauty in terms of tourism in terms of footfall how or any 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 uh, you know the thing that you have to describe about that it's one of the best things okay in india how will you describe kashmir using adjective comparative or superlative both okay use positive 
comparative and superlative adjective for Kashmir. Okay, make three sentences quickly. Quickly, let me see. Kashmir is the coolest. Coolest is as in? Okay. Coldest, not coolest. Coldest. Okay. Yes. Coldest place on in, in northern India or in India. Okay, let's say like that. Okay. Then comparative. How will you use comparative for Kashmir? Colder than, then colder. Comparative is always followed by, I want you to write a sentence. Don't give me one word. Write a sentence. Kashmir is colder than Himachal Pradesh, we can say, isn't it? Because you are comparing both the places. Both the places are cold. But which one is more cold? Or is the coldest? Or is more, like when we compare it, is, is the coldest between them is the Kashmir. So Kashmir is colder than uh, is the co is, is colder than or is the co coldest place on earth? That is a superlative, isn't it? Is relatively colder than Himachal Pradesh? Yes, relatively. Chennai has become colder over the years for no reason. <laughs> okay. Yes. Perfect. Now next is. All right. So that is all. So these. So today we discussed. What did we discuss today? Today we discussed. Uh, what are adjectives? We discussed kind of kinds of adjectives, and also uh, how we can use three forms of adjectives. That is comparative adjective, isn't it? Comparison of adjective. That means three forms of comparison. How we use adjectives to compare uh, using three forms: positive, comparative, and superlative. Okay. So comparative is followed by er, and superlative adjectives are followed um, uh, uh, have suffix as est. Okay. I agree. Are you familiar with the concept of prefix and suffix? Are you familiar with the concept of prefix and suffix? Prefix and suffix? P R E F I X, prefix. For example, if I say uncomfortable, the word uncomfortable, what is the prefix in uncomfortable? Can you tell me? No. Prefix is un. Very good. And suffix? Suffix? Suffix that comes towards the end. That is able, uncomfortable. So the, the root word is comfort. And if you add un, it becomes uncomfort. Uncomfort is no word. But you have to attach able. That is suffix. That is uncomfortable. Okay. All right. Yes, absolutely. So similarly, when we talk about the comparative and superlative adjective. So in the comparative, as you can see in the example, what comes? ER. So suffix is? ER and in superlative is EST, EST, okay, in these kind of examples, but there are always exceptions as I told you. In other example, if you say narrow, narrower, narrowest, same thing, and another kind of comparative is difficult. We, we don't say difficult or difficult test. We use more and most, okay, so most depict the superlative and more depict the comparative, all right, and another exception is good, better, best. So again, better and best talk about a different degree of adjective. Okay, better is better than good, higher than good, and best is above both good and better. That means the best. Okay, bad, worse, worse. So bad is, I mean, when you compare the, their degrees, isn't it? The intensity. When you say, okay, that was a bad accident. That means bad accident means, okay, that was bad, isn't it? Not worse, I would say bad. When you say worse, that means it was even worse than bad, isn't it? You know, the degree is a little higher. When you say it was the worst experience of my life, that means it was bigger than bad and worse. That means worst. It was the worst experience of my life, right? It was the worst accident I've ever you know, came across. All right. So you know, that means you are talking about the magnitude, the intensity of something using comparative and superlative degree. Okay? Understood? So we discussed what are adjectives, kinds of adjectives, and and comparative adjectives. All right, and we discussed uh, the pictures, and uh, wherein you gave me examples of how and how we can describe these pictures using adjectives. All right, so that's all for today. Um, so in in my, in, in our classes. Uh,
practice these concepts using pictures, using activities and quizzes also, wherein uh, you get the reinforcement of the concepts. Okay, they'll help you to you know have these concepts etched on your mind, and you will never forget it. Okay, ma'am, thank you so much. Great, good to see that. I was looking that you all were super attentive during the class. So, how's the test session? Quickly type it in the chat box. I want to know that was it good, amazing, excellent? Like, which one word you want to give to your session? Quickly, I want to know the feedback. <laughs> now, I want you to use good adjectives, adjectives for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> This is their test round now. They have learned adjective during yes. demo, so now they have to just speak about their class in adjectives only. Magical. Oh, magical. Good. It's oh, oh, who's that? Wow. Tatul, <laughs> great. Good. Very nice. So good to see that you all enjoyed the session. So your main sessions, this was just a glimpse of your classes. So this was a demo. So your main sessions will be sessions will be going to more fun filled and full of learning. So what are you waiting for? Quickly enroll for the session, okay? And we'll see you in the classes. So all right, happy weekend and enjoy your weekend. Bye bye everyone. Yes. Take care and enroll bye. for this batch. Bye bye everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.